Welcome to More Than Organized Monday. Um, I'm Miriam, and today we are going to be talking about creating zones on your workspace, actually on your desk. Um, and it's one of the biggest mistakes I watch clients make is that they do not keep a clear desk space because everything is everywhere all over their desk. They haven't defined where it's going to be so that they can um, use it efficiently and effectively. And that's why thinking about desk zones is such a great idea. Um, it is designating the areas that will hold that kind of material for use from here forward. Um, whenever you need that kind of material, you know exactly where it is. When new stuff comes in, you know where to put it. Um, and that's um, the basics of why you want to define space. It's so that you save time and effort while allowing you to get your work done, right? You're no longer sifting through a bunch of papers that have nothing to do with the project you're currently working on. You can quickly get to the items you actually need. Um, there are four areas I like to consider when it comes to my desk, and um, I thought I'd share those with you today so that you can start thinking about how that might work for you as well. The first thing that's on most people's desks is stuff about money. There's the bills, the correspondence, checkbooks, gift cards, actual cash, um, lists of accounts, uh, details of your various investments, all those kinds of things seem to end up on our desk. And it's usually because that's part of the work we have to do. Every single person has some of that work to do. So go ahead and create a spot for the money and correspondence to live on your desk. I use a stacking letter tray and the top shelf of that is all about my bills and correspondence and anything to have that has to do with money. Um, so just know that you can define your desk. And I also like to think of my desk as, um, a grid of, of nine. So there's nine spaces on my desk. There's the one right in front of me and one on either side of me in the front of my desk, the middle of my desk and the back edge of my desk. And that's how I kind of designate these zones that, top left corner of my desk is where I put my money stuff. There's a couple other reference materials that I'll talk about in just a minute, but it's basically the storage of the things I refer to regularly, one of them specifically the money stuff. The other reference materials I keep on that corner, because I said I have a stacking letter tray. It has three slots. The top one is money. The middle one is um, the stuff I use to make my sales calls when I'm talking to prospective clients. It's my script. It's the questions. It's my um, offerings list and the price list um, and a couple other things that just help me get ready for doing a sales call. And then the third layer of that desk is my, um, it's, it's called my um, goals spot, but it's really my kind of master plan of what my business looks like this year. So whenever I need to decide where something fits into my schedule, or if I can take on another thing, opportunity, event, whatever it is, I can look at that and, and see how I've mapped out my whole year. And I try to look at that at least once a week. So I don't get too off track in terms of taking on the wrong things, but, um, it's, really just kind of my my goals and and um, plan of action for the year spot. So it's handy and available whenever I need it. Um, part of the reference materials, though, it's also helpful to define a spot where you have some sort of notebook for taking notes. I like to have one. And it is for capturing interruptions, um, ideas that come to you that aren't ready to have um, new to do's that come in, other things that come up during the day that you just need a spot to capture your ideas, have a designated spot for that. That is on the bottom right of my desk. It has its own spot. This pad stays right here. And at least weekly, I mine it and put things in the right places. But it's I call it the capture spot. It's where I capture the things so I don't get too interrupted or off track and it also doesn't end up in my way while I'm working on other things. Um, there's also 
materials that are your to do things. They're the actual things you're working on right now. Um, and one word of hesitation here, or not hesitation, one word of caution is don't have everything you need to do ever in that action pile. This is what your action items are for this week today. Um, things that are projects a little bit farther out should still be off the desk, kept out of the way. I'm talking about the things that you do regularly, like your routine daily things, if there's any materials that go with those. Um, and if there's an actual project, like today I'm writing an email sequence for my new offering. So I have the notes for it. Uh, where does this part of the pile end? This is that stuff. All the materials I'm kind of working on with that. I have um, the uh, a couple offers to consider and I have some notes uh, that I need to file about some client stuff that I need to get back with them about. That's my action pile for the day. Everything else is put away farther in project spots. But today's project is right there on the left bottom of my desk. Um, so the fourth thing you need to make sure you have a spot for. So let's, um, we've got the money and bills and correspondence. We've got your reference materials, including a place to capture. We have your action items. And then you need your tools. You know, where specifically is the stapler going to go? Um, I know. I wish it was red, too. Um, but I have a pencil cup, my tape dispenser, my stapler, a couple post-it um, pads and um, paper clips on the side of my desk in this little container. It's actually an old olive tray. I love it. It's so cute. It's vintage. I bought it at an antique store. Um, but it sits right there next to my coffee. And those are the tools for my day. I include my coffee in that little bit, just enough ADHD that I need a little caffeine all day long. All right. So now that you know where things go, when new things come in, you know where to put them. Oh, look, here's a paper clip. I can put it with my other paper clips. Oh, look, the stapler. I just used it. Now it's in the wrong spot. I need to return it where it was. So I have clear space. The middle front of your desk should be clear. There should be blank. Nothing is here. So when you do need to write on something, it can go right down there and you can work on it. Um, so you know where things will be during your sessions. It's either moved forward for tomorrow's action, it's put away in reference material, or it's put in completed items which go in some sort of file or the recycle bin. It's about workflow, but workflow starts with knowing where the materials you need to do the work are actually gonna be kept and how it's gonna start and where it returns to when you're done with that part of the project. Okay, so pretty good, right? It's so easy, but it's one of those steps that we don't take the time to think about ahead of time. And in the early days, if you need to use post-it pads to define the different areas on your desk, actually label where you think you're going to put the things. Okay. I will see you next week. And it, don't forget to like, follow, share, tell all your friends, because it's just more fun that way. And I will um, see you next week. In the meantime, have a delightful day.